Welcome, everyone. This is um, the 2021 Amplifying Her Voice Summit. This is our very first summit. We decided to go global from the start, just given the, the times and everything that's been happening um, in our world today. We wanted to bring real life women working on real life solutions um, using blockchain, crypto, and decentralized finance. And these amazing ladies are here uh, from Africa today. We, we've gone around the world. We started in the Middle East this morning. We talked to Russia. We had a session on blockchain for impact. Now we're speaking with you. And there, while there's a Farsi session going on, and immediately after this, we have um, Caribbean crypto queens followed by conversation uh, of, Russia, of, of Chinese crypto queens. So ultimately, we want to hear about what you guys have been working on, um, how you got into the industry, and what kind of cool tech that you see coming out that could be either helping Africa now or in the near future. So I'm going to start with um, I'm going to start with Yvonne. You're on the top of my screen right now. Can you please tell us about your journey into crypto blockchain and what you're doing now? Um, thank you, Annie. And thank you for the opportunity to speak here. I feel very privileged. Uh, just a bit of introduction for myself. Um, my name is Yvonne Kagondu. I'm, uh, I'm the Kenya Community Coordinator at Paxpo. And for those who don't know Paxpo, Paxpo is a um, peer-to-peer Bitcoin marketplace where willing buyers and willing sellers uh, buy and sell Bitcoin. And peer-to-peer -peer, uh, Bitcoin trading is very popular in Africa, especially, mostly because uh, it targets the what we call the bottom billion, the un underbanked and the unbanked, enabling them to buy and sell Bitcoin using as many payment methods as they want. Anything that's available, like for example, in Kenya, the most popular payment method that we have on tax for is M-Pesa. Um, so like Kenya, we don't have, we have people who use banks, but it's not as popular as M-Pesa. So peer-to-peer -peer enables such situations. And that's how we've been able to have such a wide reach in Kenya, in um, Nigeria, South Africa, and many parts of Africa. Yeah, and my journey into crypto is that um, I started out, uh, I learned about Bitcoin in school, university. I did a bachelor's degree in financial economics, and that's where I was first introduced to Bitcoin. And uh, I thought of my career is I would like it to go into the tech space, mixed into finance. And that's how I was able to venture into Bitcoin. And uh, I'd say three, four years, almost four years down the line, here I am. And I'm so happy to be in this great panel with people from all over the world. Yeah, thank you. You're so welcome. And we're so honored to have you here. Rosalind Wanjiru. You are a Kenyan rock star. Um, I've, I've, I've heard amazing things. That note that you gave me, that's what I woke up to this morning, your WhatsApp message, just like blew my heart open. I woke up to this and I told everyone, I'm ready to give this welcome address. I'm gonna have tears of joy when I speak this morning. Hello. Just so happy Hello. to have all of you to here today, just showing me that the future, like really, we are the future. We are yeah. the future. You yeah. are the future. Yeah. Like, I'm, looking at, I'm looking across the screen, across Africa, across the world, right? And 85 countries have joined us here today. And this message that you're sharing is going to be uh, circulating after this event. So whatever you share with us today is for the women and girls, like, you know, who are, who are coming after us. And so please tell us about your journey. Share whatever you like and tell us what you're doing now. All right, thank you so much. So uh, my journey began as an economist, just young and curious about opportunities in the tech space at the time. I wanted to do a master's in um, data science and really that was a bit of a blank check. So I wasn't looking at crypto for crypto's sake or blockchain for blockchain's sake. I was really just um, keen on opportunities, right? So um, the headspace that I was in then was really that I just wanted to further my career. And when I, when I thought about what interest areas I'd focus on in terms of um, a master's in data science or a master's in international relations, then... Um, I hope my sound is clear. 
Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, awesome. So, um, in just considering the opportunities that were at hand, then I was like, what will I do? What can be relevant for me as an as a young economist, you know? And then I got to learn about interest areas in cybersecurity. And one, well, one uh, clear experience that really actually happened to me was that my mom, there was some funds missing from my mom's account. And in trying to follow that up, I just wondered how can just funds go missing from someone's bank account? And I, I thought that was really absurd. So I thought, okay, are our funds really safe in these organizations? And so I thought if I research um, further into cybersecurity, especially from my financial angle, I felt I'd be one of the few who are actually doing it or trying to address that problem. So that's the context in which I got to learn about blockchain as a key to cybersecurity. And I was like, whoa, this is so exciting. And um, that was um, pretty much late into 2017. I initially did not love Bitcoin because I felt, how can something that's not gold be worth uh, about $17,000 and plus? And the figure just kept going up yeah. and going This is ridiculous. I mean, why? Why is, you know, what's really pushing? Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, so um my initial um like reservations toward Bitcoin were just feeling like it's this is not sustainable. And well when the figures went down in 2019, I was like, Yeah, I was right, this thing was gonna go down anyway, you know. But um I got to meet amazing people um who are hosting meetups at the time. That is uh, EOS Nairobi Community, Blockchain Association of Kenya. And they really opened up my eyes to see the opportunities within blockchain beyond uh, cryptocurrencies. So for me, it became, it, it became more of a um, warm up really into the blockchain and crypto space because initially I had experimented with software development and I thought, yeah, I want to be the next blockchain dev mm -hmm. and a superstar, like we are the fewest in the world. And you then um, my love for research really took over, you know, so you for someone who's wondering what points they can start with in terms of skill, then um, I would say go with your strong suit in terms of skills, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, 2018, 2019, 2020 have been really an unveiling of my journey as um, as an economist, as a researcher, and as a marketing professional. And these are the roles that I've then been able to um, exhibit or kind of grow in within both EOS Nairobi and at the time now at PesaBase as the head of growth in terms of us just trying to bring on board users in the in the East African and Australia communities just um, for remittances. And you find that sending money across um, not just Africa, but from abroad and across Africa to the rest of the world sometimes can be a headache in terms of both cost and time. So with blockchain, then we are solving that. We've built on Celo and um, being the inaugural winners of the first Celo camp last year was a huge honor for us. I mean, it was really mind blowing that we get to build on the first mobile friendly blockchain that's out there, you know, and well, that's really relevant for us because Africa is mobile first and not just mobile first, you're looking at our population at a median of about 19 years. So that tells you wow. there's a lot of us who are extremely, really, really wow. young, you know, so I feel that we are at the best place possible in time to um, present blockchain and crypto to um, people who do not need to experience the the bottlenecks of long you know long uh, transfer times for resources and um, extreme costs when it comes to um, transferring money from on money and friends because uh, sorry from family and friends because then this is our time to literally embrace trade income and just as you want highlighted then um, additional income opportunities for crypto because really crypto is for right. us all so that's a bit of my journey and some of my highlights into the crypto space. Fantastic. And, and you're, and okay, that's your, what, what is the name of your company, Rosalind? Can you type it in? Pesa can base. you type, type it in the chat? Yes. There yes. you go. People but, can, people yeah. can find you. And I didn't yep. realize it was built on Celo. So you have you, did you work very closely with Yaliway on this or was it, did you work directly with Celo developers or how did, how did this happen? How did you get this site on Celo? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So actually, Celo, um, I would say more of the Celo team and uh, uh, Rachel, we even just had a, a discussion of, about an hour ago on Clubhouse on crypto okay. founders. And that was an <laughs> exciting chat. So, um, yeah, we, we were just part of the first Celo Camp Accelerator and yes, did get to work with Yaliwe on a few points here and there. But yeah, 
it's it was a really incredible okay. journey. Yaliwe was our other panelist. She's yeah. sick right now. She can't make it, so she sends her she sends oh. her regrets. Um, this is great because we have been in talk. We've been talking to Cello also on another project yeah. and saw that you know there's so many interlinkages. Like I think anything blockchain for impact, they're on top of it. <laughs> it feels like right. Yeah, and like, yeah. And we really connected on the point of um, vision, mission, and values, and really that made it so seamless to work with the Cello team. I mean, we've been. I've seen several accelerator programs before and they're really awesome. They're really incredible. I would say then Cello is just the perfect match for us. I, I think just that's the best way so, to describe it. So really that. quick question. There's consensus, there's EOS, there's uh, Zencash, yeah. Z Zcash or Zencash before? Um, it was Jane Lippincott yeah. there. Um, I'm just trying to think of some people that, um, Cardano, are, are they still yeah. active in Kenya? Um, I would say yes, just that the different extents and different okay. communities, because one of the observations that I made then was that you'd have a project launching and then, um, you know, they definitely try to build out their community, but it's still being in the early stages, then we don't have like massive traction, say hundreds of thousands or millions of users yet, but um, we're still on that growth curve. But the more people learn about these prog programs, yeah. projects and hackathons, events, then it's a matter of just really coming together and building what works for different communities. Fantastic. And and Oluchi, yeah. can you tell me a little bit about your your experience like um tell us a little bit about your background and why you got into crypto what you're doing in crypto and then we're going to start comparing what's going on in east africa and west africa i was hoping to have south and north i have nothing against them you're all great north africa actually spoke first thing in the morning so i'm a little sad about south africa but they're doing stuff too so let's hear what south africa has to say <laughs> okay hi everyone so um only chini believe and um yeah, so a bit of my blockchain experience. I got into the blockchain space through an hackathon. Uh, so I innocently went for an hackathon. I knew nothing about blockchain. I knew nothing about crypto then. Uh, I think that was back in 2018, 2018. Uh, it was on two decades of women, uh, you know, organized the hackathon. It was basically about solving, finding solutions to some of the UN goals and stuff like that. So I was with a team and um, we were working on a blockchain solution for um, you know, areas that are affected by uh, natural disaster, right? So we just sort of like um, profiling, you know, all those things, those kind of areas that point to natural disaster, profiling them and so that if any issue, any natural disaster should occur, uh, we exactly know um, who the person that were there and we know that they are the ones that would have access to whatever funds is made available for, you know, those persons. And because the record is on the blockchain, the record is, you know, um, transparent, right? We won't, we won't get a, uh, we won't have a situation where people just come and fix their name in just to, you know, get the benefit, like being why they're not in that place. So that was like the solution we were working on. And I knew nothing about blockchain, but it was actually very fascinating and interesting. And I was like, wow. So, you know, we a technology like this could exist that, you know, could allow us track stuff like this. And then before that time, I was already um, sort of angered with the way, um, you know, um, the certifications were done in school, you know, um, stuff like you. So some 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 some, some, some um, universities where you put in your base, and because of one bias from one or two lecture, you begin to get poor grades in school. There's no transparency into that. There's no um, transparency into the grading grade system. People just the lecturers just give you what they feel is nice because they have one or two bias about you, and that was one of my concerns then. Uh, also, with you know land registry, the fact that. Um, you, get, you see people um, selling fake lands to people, you know, people fighting over land for years and years. And I'm like, you know, there ought to be like a solution for all of this. So when I went to the Akatel and I saw that, you know, there was something like that that could allow transparency, um, immutability, and decentralization, I, I got very interested in it. And that was the start of my blockchain experience. So I started because I knew it was. There was just a lot of information around uh, blockchain, not like a, a lot of confusing information then about it. So I really didn't understand it then. So I went back, I took my time, started you know, researching, I started attending events, trying to network with you know people already in the blockchain space. And luckily for me, you know, I was able to meet with a friend, a good friend, his name is Sava. 
it was one of the persons that you know I sort of like learned, you know, most of what I knew on the blockchain at the end stage, right? From because we were so we started learning together, you know, late nights trying to understand the technology and you know. So it's been it's been beautiful since then. Currently, I I work at Bondo Africa. Um, Bondo is a crypto wallet, right? It's a social crypto wallet that allows for um, easy payment. So you can so you can easily just you know um, withdraw crypto, transfer crypto, buy and sell crypto. So everything around crypto interactions, right? We can sort of like have. Um, Person like I'm mean, very very into interface <clears throat> for user to use. So you basically do not need to have a hundred percent knowledge on um, cryptocurrency or blockchain to be able to buy and sell crypto to be able to you know transfer crypto from you know um, within Africa, working with Ghana and um, Nigeria. So you can do you know, many of those stuff, right? So um, yeah, I'm currently working at Bondu um, as a blockchain engineer in Bondu, and I'm um, funding. I have a community I'm you know, pushing because. Um, at the early stage of my coming into blockchain, right, I it was I so it was mostly so most of the most of the events I went to, most of the people I connected with you know, were mostly guys, right? They were mostly the ones you know pushing it into the space, going all you know, going all into the space, being courageous about the space, and um, you know some ladies, you know, ladies were just um you know so much there, right? So um, at some point I was like, okay, I think you know it's time to have. Um, a lot of ladies at least network within this space trying to encourage more ladies you know to come into the space um, um so in ladies so it's ladies do tech right um and then we have a specialized arm for blockchain which is ladies do blockchain right so they have um, the the point is that we're building a very unique mentorship program um targeted at ladies because uh, we are ladies, of course, so nobody would understand us better than ourselves, right? So um, what we are doing at Ladies in Tech is um, crazy. Did you, start it? Did you start this? Did you start Ladies in Tech? Yes, Ladies Do Tech. Ladies Do Tech, and all of you are part of Ladies Do Tech? Um, uh, all no. of you? No, just all like of you on the, on, on the screen here? Oh, no, no, no. 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 Is this, no, no. Is this West African? Is this West African, or is it is it is it something else? Is it global? What it, What is it? So, yeah, so the target is Africa, uh, okay. but most of our community members are Nigerians. We're now we're pushing Africa at large, um, trying to get more ladies into the space, trying to get more ladies to push limits, and then of course challenge the status quo, challenge the norm. Uh, I believe, I personally believe that blockchain is at it's not so early stage, right? And then a lot of our male counterparts are already flooding into the system, so it makes sense that we can get like as much ladies, you know, passionate and um, interested in this space at this stage, right? Because if we can get that to happen right at um it's a five years ten years time to come we would have a fair you know um a fair gap between you know um, um gender inclusion and blockchain so we have like we achieve like a good um percentage right of gender inclusion in blockchain uh not that you know the guys have started way ahead of us and then we're trying to catch up so it's not gonna be like we're trying to catch up or we are in it we're going with the technology together um so yeah so, so when, I, when I came to Africa, I didn't see any problem of diversity in East Africa. I mean, you guys, you guys have a lot of very strong women that are that are both financially savvy and tech savvy. And the same in in, in Nigeria looks like it's like yeah. the, 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 there's a lot of training programs and outreach. Yeah. Um, uh, why are you all so different than other parts of Africa? Can you can you share with me like? there's there's a very strong tech savvy community what what is what is, is it government incentives is it in um educational programs are just is it because the market size and big tech companies are coming there what do you think it is that's like driving this push to getting so many women into tech and finance so i i, I think basically um so we basically at, at this part right, we have we have stayed right so much in we ladies have no being so much um, at the back behind the curtains and eh? so i personally i personally think it's um, we are just so tired of you know basically so it's women i think women it's ladies helping ladies it's a youth coming up it's a youth fighting for what you know we believe in what we believe should be right so not, not basically also we, we really can't wait for the government yeah. Um, to put out of this infrastructure, we've been waiting for a, lo a long time, right? So we can't keep waiting in the government. We can't keep waiting to this infrastructure, to this, you know, um, technology.
come to us, but we can go for it, right? So I believe that one of the things that's making us stand out um, in terms of tech, in terms of being tech savvy, is the is the push, um, the youth standing up for themselves, the youth fighting for themselves, the youth fighting for what they believe in, women standing up, knowing that you know enough is enough, you know, hearing stories. So there's been a lot of um, push from women here, right? A lot of um, women's story we get to read um, a lot of stories about women doing stuff doing powerful stuff in the industry right and then it has kind of encouraged us to know that you know, if this person can do it they can go this far if someone here can do it then we definitely can do it so there's really nothing stopping us from doing that and then we are just you know pushing pushing and pushing and pushing until we eventually get there so um, the, the, this, this I've seen, um, it's happening in, in, in not just Nigeria, it's ha happening like everywhere in the world. I think that <laughs> we talked about this earlier today called the divine feminine. There's a global shift that's happening. The whole planet is just becoming more, I, I, I would say before COVID, it was like male centric and now it's more female centric. It's, I don't know if you're all feeling that shift, Yeah. Uh, but uh, ultimately it's, it's, it's how do how do the two sexes work more in unison with one another, and I'm I'm seeing this and all of the initiative that you guys are doing. Um, what is she doing? Yvonne is giving me running symbols. I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> she's trying to get back in. She's running somewhere. It looks like. <laughs> anyway, um, so there's two people that wanted to come on on the stage. I might let them in if they come back. Something happened on the stage. Um, but yes, so Rosalind, any major initiatives that are going on in in Kenya to get more women into blockchain crypto that you want to highlight or share with us, like that have been successful? Yeah, there are different initiatives actually. Um, Bitcoin KE in particular has uh, highlighted several uh, events like that happen weekly and others are daily. And a lot of them are really focused on the awareness aspect. So you realize that for Kenya, a lot of people get to know about Bitcoin either through, um, in the past, unfortunately, there are quite a number of scams that people lost a lot of money. So you realize that that educational aspect has become so strong because people will ask first, am I getting into a legitimate um, initiative or project because um, you know, even based on the 2017 and 2018 ICO craze, then almost anyone would come up and say, my coin is going to be the next 10, 50, 100 X coin. And hey, put your money here. You're going to miss out. And, you know, they really um, they really um, played with the numbers and told a story that, um, you know, if you put your money in this, then it's better than stocks. It's better than land. It's better than any other investment that you could. But you realize that some of the gaps in, for instance, financial awareness were the ones that a lot of these comes did leverage. So um, based on, I would say, on the aftermath of such a scenario, then a lot of people did uh, put out initiatives on either self-awareness, self-education, and um, being part of the different uh, crypto communities that are uh, represented in both, especially Nairobi, Mombasa, and Nakuru, which are some of the major cities, right, and, and Kisumu too. So I would say it's, a, it's both a mix of... Um, community initiatives and in and personal initiative and just to um address part of what you'd asked earlier on about you know why are there you know why is there such a hunger so to speak toward both financial and tech savviness it's it's actually very simple that um there was a i would say rather crippling statistic that out of every graduate that will um you know probably uh complete their studies in this year um the average time that they can expect to get a job legitimately quote unquote is five years five years doesn't really work for a lot of people because um you know you can't just tell someone who has put in four years of study and probably gotten a, a student loan that they have to wait five years for them to get that income so the question is what can someone do within these five years right so the, one of the first answers was never really um even online working opportunities because i would say uh say for instance opportunities on like upwork freelancer say let's just say before you know before crypto really some of the top online working opportunities started warming up around 2010 2011 so a lot of experiments both wins and losses and um 
with this knowledge sharing, then you realize a lot of these um, groups would lobby fast on Facebook. So um, for Kenya, you'll see a lot of these educational initiatives already existing. So with crypto coming into the limelight, let's say 2015, 16 and 17, then um, it's leveraged on that uh, shift to embracing online work or what you would call locally or to call locally side hustles and then you know it just being an evolving a constantly evolving space because people will ask and if especially someone um scams or defrauds someone else they are um blacklisted and what the details of that experience are actually described in platforms like buyer beware so that you are not um, adversely affected by the same party or person in that way. So that's, th those are some of the contributors to, um, you know, this connectivity in both tech and uh, financial savviness. Absolutely. And I, and I worry, like when I, when I'm building my own tech, I say, this is, this is going to reach grandmas, my, like people like my own grandma or yeah. grandmas in Africa. Yeah. Um, some with no teeth. I always say that because you can, you know, they have like the best smile and you know, you don't want like them to think like that's the, that's the, what's going to happen is you make these promises and ultimately if it's transformational, it really has to help the people that need it the most. That's what's transformational, not make the fat cats fatter. And that's what happened before. And we know, we know what happened in 2018, 2019. Were you all investing before before the ICO boom? Like, did you were you investing in coins back then, or just reading about it and just like hearing about it, or were you actively in 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 entrenched in it? So I'll let Yvonne comment, and then Aluchi, and then Rosalind. Well, for me at that time, I didn't have the capacity to invest uh, like financially because. Um, I don't know, it was just after school. I was a, a youth in the country. <laughs> but I did learn a lot during that period. Like I from those I we had an ICO in the country in Africa. And during that period I learned most of the hands-on skills. I even got my first job uh from one of those icos and i learned so much concept because with with the bitcoin and blockchain it's usually hands-on like uh, we say uh, it's two years in the normal world is like six months in bitcoin blockchain space so uh with that i got most of the jug the hurdles the um icos the the small words that are unique to us that's where i learned it all and it was an experience for for I think everyone, and even right now when we have the DeFi, um, I don't know, I don't, I, I think it's legit, but some some DeFi projects coming up, I think we're smarter and I think it's very yeah. important to learn from previous experiences. Yeah, so during that I see, I appreciate that period because I learned so much and it built me and I think it built, it built the space as well. Yeah. Totally, and I think with DeFi, the interesting thing is, you have models that are disrupting fintech. Fintech is way more easier to understand than what is a token, what is the tokenomics, what is this, what is that. So the more tangible it becomes, the more simpler it is to understand, the faster you're going to get adoption. This is all common sense that I'm saying. Ultimately, I would say that ICO period was super confusing. It's like it was it was mostly hype. It was almost like dot com hype, right? And it was just like let's let's get some great marketing and let's get a great like, you know, group together, stick a celebrity on and there you go. I mean, that's not what this is. This is real tech for real people, built by real people. Um, do you, any of you code? Do you do you code or are are you do you have people code for you in in your company or any of you coders, devs? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Are you a dev? Do you do you you, you're a dev, Oluchi, that's awesome. You, Rosalind, no, right? I'm, I'm a finance girl, like, so it's, it's all good. Like, we can do numbers, you can do tech, that's fine. Um, so ultimately, Oluchi, in your, in your perspective, you think uh, ICO time was a good training ground for you? Like, did you, did you have some lessons that, that prepared you for what's happening now with the boom, would you say? Uh, so honestly, I wish I, I wish I, I had that knowledge or experience then. So um, at the ICO time, I got into blockchain. Um, so most of the um, 
what was the information I had about you know crypto, crypto, and you know the ICO, right? It, it's it's I so I had the opinion then that you know it was all spammy, all scam, you know, there are a lot of scam, it was really very difficult to identify which was actually which and which was great. So I totally wasn't interested in the crypto parts, right? So I totally did not own any crypto, I did not buy any crypto. The only reason why I had it here in my um, 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 Ethereum address was because I needed this to test for development, right? So I was particularly interested in the development part of it, right? Building the solutions, right? I was really interested in you um decentralized application what else i mean what else can we build on top of blockchain you know apart from um the financial applications like what else can we do i mean it's it's a for instance ethereum made it very very easy for you to be able to build you know applications on the blockchain and then the question is what else can we do with this technology right because the technology is strong it's superb um and, it, and it's, a, it's a great technology and it has a lot of use cases right so as i then i i personally felt um that you know a lot of attention was being paid to just the crypto part and um nobody was really looking into like the technology itself and you know all of all the other solutions that can be built on it i mean solutions on decentralized ownership you know when it comes to landed properties when it comes to you know um um what, what, which is happening now right which is already happening now like a lot of people are beginning to give um solutions around this other space outside of the, just the crypto the so yes i really did not um take advantage of that that period and, and i'm wishing i did right i wish i had me to see then imagine what somebody would have told me by now <laughs> so yeah so uh, but yeah so i you know i still you know learned a lot you know the blockchain part the blockchain part there stronger wiser better faster yes it was like yeah. one step at a time like yeah. run, walk before you run kind of thing and yeah. so i i mean for me i i learned about crypto by actually putting money into a fund and it just exploded in in 2018 um yeah. and i pulled out when it was you know before the crash and it's only because i'd seen numbers before on what to expect you know like oh these are outrageous numbers and i'm like this isn't like real, so I might as well just stop, you know? It's like so, so you made enough money then. Eh? Well, I made enough to like get this thing going and then I'm like, okay, now now I know what I wanna do to be like really transformative. Like I wanna build tech that people are going to use. I just I don't wanna build wallets that don't get used by us, right? So ultimately it's like build tech for us, by us that we're going to use. I mean, how yeah. difficult can that be, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rosalind, you know how difficult that is because you're, you're building your own tech. It's like, even if even if you know what you want and you have people that want it, it's still hard, right? So it's like, ultimately, when we're in control of this whole design process, and this is what I love about this group of women right here, is that you are so essential to what the future of this country is going to be like. It's going to be tech built by you. I mean, why should we be embracing tech built by someone else? It's tech built by you, ultimately. And if, and if you, you can do it in your own market, it's something that you can obviously scale into other emerging markets that have the same problem. I mean, how, how complex is that? So this is, this is part of the reason why we started this dialogue today, is to really start people thinking about, yes, you can do it. Yes, it's, 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 uh, it's taking us in a different trajectory and what would be like the most helpful to you right now in terms of taking you to the next level? I mean, we're all in this together. You've heard it over and over again. So what would be really helpful to you, Rosalind? Talk about a little bit about where you see like the best innovations and what kinds of things that you're looking for in, in terms of partnerships and collaborations. And let's see if we can start a conversation on how we can actively work together today. It's literally a blank check, and um, I would say I'm honored to actually um, receive such a question at this point in time because we are building, we are connecting, we are, you know, at that space at every entrepreneur um, starts off and you know what you want to do, you know what your vision is, and that's very clear for you because for PESA basis that we do want to connect Africa financially. And we feel that it's really literally the perfect timing because um, the Africa Free Trade Agreement then uh, makes the continent the largest, the world's largest uh, free trade area, right? About uh, 54, 55 countries. 
it's Sorry? the free it's, it's the free zone right the yeah yeah it's the free zone about now literally all these countries on board and um then we are in that space of shaping history right um we want to uh, or rather we envision a space where if i want to send money to egypt to morocco nigeria to namibia it should take seconds it should take less than two minutes right it shouldn't be that i have to create different accounts um go through several processes before i can send funds for products and for services right and that we being in this creative challenges both uh, socially economically that will we will face but then that's why collaboration is super important for us so um i'm literally just putting it out there to anyone who is in the in the remittances space that um you know let's reach out let's uh, collaborate in terms of empowering africans financially because um really we all have so much more to bring on board together when um you know we are empowering each other rather than out competing each other yes we do live in a capitalist uh, world which is really for a fact that can be wiped out but i do believe there's a lot of value to be unlocked and especially when you think about this in terms of um creative models of wealth distribution right. rather than extractive models right? right and you know even when we talk about you know reducing the wealth gap what does that look like what does that mean is it in lesser transaction fees is it in faster transaction times for people and just really making it easy for people to do what they need right. to do with their resources right, right? and when you talk about uh oh she froze blockchain and crypto then um it's that we need to be able to make these conversations safe and accessible for everyone in a way that um, will mean more wins all across the board, right? So these are some of the thoughts that really run um, concurrently for me. And, um, you know, just even in relation to what uh, Yvonne and Oluchi have mentioned about 2017, 2018, the ICO boom and bust, it's that we do have these lessons to learn. And this is the time to literally connect and synergize so that the, our communities can benefit from them. Yes, there's no magic bullet to this. Yes, there's no silver lining in terms of, oh, wow, we just have this formula that we're going to apply and everyone is going to win on that. No, actually we are in one of the toughest spaces because we are, we, for some people, we are changing ideas. For some people, we are introducing new models that they were not used to. For some people, we have to build the trust from scratch. And, um, you know, blockchain as a tech isn't going to just um, make it a magic thing, right? So it's about us having the resilience and the patience to build in a way that, um, you know, it's going to be sustainable for us all across the board in terms of uh, defining the future that we do want for ourselves. Um, so, so next up, so that, that's fantastic. So ultimately, um, I think that the starting point of the conversation is, you know, how do we, how do we build trust? This is Africa after all, you've got these global partners that can reach out, maybe technical partners, your devs in Kenya, are they, are they, are they mostly Kenyans or are they coming from all over the world? Like, are you, are you getting, are you seeing like, Indian devs or Chinese devs or Russian devs or what are you seeing? I'm super curious. Like that's that's something I wanted to ask all of you. It's like, are you seeing mostly like indigenous or or is it being cross pollinated at this point? Because blockchain is very tricky in that in that space. At least our development team, the majority of them are from Kenya, but um, the team is growing such that we have uh, people both in Australia and. Uh, Juba as well as Uganda, because those are the countries that we are operational in for uh, as at this point in time. Great. Um, Dr. Jane Thomason is here listening. We did her podcast on block changing the world. I think I talked to you guys about podcasts and I'm speaking to Yali Way about podcasts also. Um, so here's Jane Thomason. She's going to join us. And if Nene wants to come, Yvonne, let her know that now is a good time to hit the blue button. If there's anyone in the audience, that wants to join us on stage. I know Bet Bettina had a question about PESA base being custodial. Is it? Is it custodial? Well, it, this? Yes. So you got your answer there. Jane's coming on now. Let's see. Can you see us, Jane? Yeah, I can. Awesome. Can you see me? Hi. 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 So nice to see you all. This really lady. Have, have hey. you met Jane before? Have you met Jane before? No, yeah. uh, but you mentioned Australia, so here yeah. I am. No, no, no. 
So I was saying we're like three continents away. So I'm here in West Palm Beach, Florida. We've got West Africa, East Africa, and Australia all on the same screen, and we're all blockchain junkies. And how <laughs> on Women's Day. So how great is that? This is definitely Hi, game. Awesome. Hi, really great to meet you guys. Um, I've been doing work with people in Kenya and Nigeria and Rwanda, so uh, lovely to be on this panel with you and super interested in what's happening in Africa because, you know, I think that's where the innovation of the future is going to come from. And I think specifically with digital assets and crypto, uh, people are really innovating in Africa because it solves important problems that they've got. So. So great to meet you ladies and really nice to join you on this International Women's Day. Hi, um, sorry, I was going to say something to Jane. So Jane, do you remember the decorations of women at Patton? Sometime, oh, you know? <laughs> oh, you're, so, you're a bit dark. Amazing, oh. so good to see you. Oh, oh, I'm so I... good. <laughs> That's fantastic. I, uh, I was looking at you and I thought, oh. Yeah. I was just selling them, <laughs> right? that I got started on my blockchain career from that hackathon. Fantastic. That was just oh. such a great experience. And yeah. I met so many wonderful people there and, and really, really interesting projects. So yeah. congratulations. So you're, you're working on a project now. Yeah, so um, I'm working with a social crypto um, wallet, Bondo Africa. Um, so we basically are um, promoting um, crypto interactions, buy, sell, withdraw, transfer, everything has to be with crypto, making it very easy for you know, people that are really not crypto savvy to still be able to with crypto and then you do whatever they want to do. You can buy gift card, you can invest your crypto and then get your tones. So, yeah, so I'm working at the blockchain. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. But Nigeria's got a bit of problem with the central bank and the regulators um, yeah. jumping up and down a bit at the moment. But at the same time, I think, didn't Kenya announce that Bitcoin was going to be a reserve currency? So it's so polarised, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, um, just a fact check, the central bank did not announce that uh, Bitcoin would be a reserve currency. The st central bank is still cautionary on uh, Bitcoin. So for now, we it's not a go. <laughs> Oh, okay. No. I just saw an article on it about a, oh, three weeks ago or something like that. Maybe yeah. yeah they and, and unfortunately, it wasn't from a trusted source. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so Jane, Jane Roslyn, Roslyn is is super cool. She's on the Blockchain Association of Kenya, and she's you're on the board, right? Um, Roslyn, you're on the board of Blockchain Association Kenya. So she's as close to the ground when it comes to regulation, what's going on in the blockchain space in Kenya. So I um, I would take her word over anything. Oh, no, I'm totally taking her word. And uh, Rosalind, I spoke when Kenya did the blockchain task force. I appeared before the blockchain task force and I've been following what's happening in Kenya with a lot of interest. So cool. Wonderful. So I actually reached out to another woman um, from Block, who was formerly the Blockchain Association of Kenya um, regarding Women's Day today, Jane, and I said, we've got to do this Pan-Africa session. It's going to be Women's Day. And then it, I said, it's not just Pan-Africa, it's going to be global. But never did we imagine we would have like all these continents <laughs> present at the same time. It just became truly global. So thank, thank you for like you know, your comments. And if you could share a little bit about what you, where you see the greatest innovation happening, any, any pockets of Africa, like what, since, since you're following the pulse, I know you're talking to a lot of people, blockchain for impact people. Is there anything that you've seen that's just been super like brilliant that's happening in, in this part of the world? Uh, yeah, there's so much. Uh, it's almost hard to, to start because you've got so much innovation going on. But you know, one of the things that I really like is um, the work with Sophie Blackstad in Mali with digitising women's cooperatives and creating alternate credit scores for people who don't have identities. I think that, you know, because you've got a lot of people who don't have a formal identity, so it's hard for them to get into the economic system. So that's one project that I really like. There's a lot going on with decentralised uh green energy, you know, and, and I think that that potential to be able to uh, create off-grid energy using solar power and, and distribute small amounts of power to people in villages um, is really powerful. And then, uh, of course, loads and loads and loads in, in agri-tech and supply chain, 
uh, and provenance. And then finally, you know, one that is sort of probably important for all of us just because of the proportion of displaced people in the world at the moment is, is the work that's going on with blockchain in the humanitarian sector because uh, they're probably innovating faster than others because of the pressure that they've got. And, um, you know, the power of mobile in Africa is immense. So, they're, you know, that's what opens up the world now uh, to problems that we couldn't solve for decades and decades. Now mobile gives us some kind of solution. And then finally, Anu, because I want to really recognise the work that you're doing in terms of, you know, amplifying people's voices, what we can do now with voice technology yeah. is so powerful, especially for illiterate women and the very cheap receivers or mobiles that people can have and you can communicate in their language and you can communicate um, things for, that they can learn and that they can share. And, you know, I think that if we if we harness that, you know, we can reach so many people with knowledge and information that will help them improve their lives and that's so powerful. So I haven't told the ladies, like, I don't know how long you've been in the session. I haven't told them what I'm doing. I'm built, Ladies, I'm building a podcast app. It's women-led, women-focused, and it's all content, everything from, like, vaginas to private equity. So talking about women's health, breast cancer, we have investing, entrepreneurship. And when you listen and learn, you're going to earn tokens. And these tokens can ultimately be converted into gift cards, rewards, and you can actually invest in another woman or invest in, in yourself or whatever it may be. Um, but ultimately, it's, it's, it's built on Android, iOS, and a new platform that's about to be launched soon that works on $10 mobile phones. We're just working on the final logins, and then I'm going to send it your way to, to, to play with. But ultimately, this is going to help you know our grandmas and help these girls that are out of school right now. There's 900 million girls. I think about them every day. I think my team has been thinking about them every day, like as we as we as we do this work that we're doing now with amplifying her voice. It's so important to be thinking of refugees. There's a lot in, in the continent, right? There's a, a refugee situation going on. And so ultimately we're looking at tech that's not only transformative, but that's inclusive. And when we can hit those two things and and make it fair, I mean that's 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 a game changer right there. So like What's going to work in our part of the world in, in South Asia, Asia, Southeast Asia is going to work in Africa and vice versa. So we're we're like looking at all of you thinking, you know, what can we do that's more effective, cheaper and and reach the people that can't read? Like Jane said, like this is this is important because we're not going to get to high tech until we address this problem of literacy, basic literacy, that too. Right. And and these languages. I mean, that's another thing because. I don't think I could be speaking these local languages. It would it would take forever. But now if we can have audio based technologies that can appeal to them and they can communicate with us, I mean that's a game changer. So that's what I see as transformative tech um, coming coming forward. There is somebody here. Um, I just I just sent you guys a text. Can you all check, please? Um, can you see Can you see the 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 DM that I sent you? Yes. Does anyone? Have a comment. One second, Jane. I can't so, see anything. You can't see anything because you're not on the chat. This is the Africa oh. chat. Hang okay, on. Just, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm just going to ask these people. No, I think we're going to hold on this, right? Um, Bettina, I don't know who you are, love. You want to come see? You want to come up on stage? Hit the blue button if you do. And say hi, because you've been chatting the whole time. We, we're welcoming you on the stage if you want to come. Now's your chance. No? Okay. <laughs> we've, we've got somebody shy. We've got a shy Kathy over there. Um, all good. You can, you can hide. <laughs> Fine, you can hide. Um, all good. So that's that's like more or less what I wanted to cover today is just, you know, giving people an insight. What's happening in Africa? Who's driving this amazing change? How do we all connect with one another? How do we stay inspired by one another? Like each of you is doing some incredible things. It's pandemic, right? Ultimately, it's it's like if we can if we can create small wins now, imagine what we can do when we're out of this situation. 
So I, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us. And Jane from Australia, I don't know what time it is. You're up at weird hours. What time is it where you are? It's 6 a.m. Yes, yeah, she gets up at four, so that's normal for her. Like she goes to bed early too. <laughs> I wanted to catch you. I know I wanted to catch you, ladies. So just even to say hello and and you know, uh, it's so nice to see Luchi again, but we we we're all connected and we should stay connected. And if ever I can you know, do anything that helps you or gets your message out or, you know, help you talk through something, then reach out to me because even though we're not meeting every day, then, you know, we're kind of on a mission together. Yeah, absolutely. And for those who are like watching and too shy to come up or raise your hand, we're all just getting comfortable with this hop-in technology. My goal is to do this again. Rosalind, we can do, do one of these together now that you know how it works and Yvonne and Aluchi. There'll be more of us and we should talk more often. It's not like every March 8th or something. We're going to plan another one of these and, and try to get more of our sisters around the world and come up with actionable ways to move the needle forward. So thank you all for listening. It's uh, almost three o'clock. Are you guys, did you have anything else you might want to cover or anyone else in the audience? Did you have any final questions before we end this session? Anything we did not touch upon? projects in Kenya uh, for those who are curious about like what's you know what's working on the ground um, there's already like uh, melon, melanin solar who are working on an, on an energy use case for uh, blockchain and um, just different communities they both I think they've been both in Kenya and uh, Botswana if I'm not wrong but um, you can just always check out their projects on uh, Twitter or LinkedIn and uh, there's the Utu Trust pro Protocol who are looking to leverage trust. And, you know, just as we highlighted earlier on that, trust is such a critical part of these projects really working out um, in in um, in conjunction one with another and different partnerships, absolutely. I wouldn't uh, touch on, on Paxu because Yvonne is already there. I don't want to repeat what she's going to say. But um, really, this is an exciting time because um, each one of the projects that um, you're going to hear about, then you realize that there's an emphasis on two things. One is community and second, um, the mobile fast approach. Bangda Pesa has had a lot of success um, in the last year because they've um, linked a community literally and helped people access credit and as you realize that um you know we talk about challenges to do with literacy and um uh, at the end of the day how does grandma win out of all of this right and it's really about making it so simple for her as a one two three or click save chat she doesn't need to have such a very um high learning curve you know so the space that we're in is super exciting because um all the projects that I've seen so far are really in one way or another leveraging that aspect of community. And even with Kotani Pay, I mean, they've figured out how to do a USSD for um, communities that do not have very fast or quality access to internet. So literally anyone with a mobile phone can have a code whereby they can get to both send, receive money. And um, what I love about this space is that each one of these pioneering uh, teams are breaking barriers and they're redefining what it means for people to share value across borders and in the shortest time possible. The future is bright, ladies. The future is truly, truly bright. I mean, our, what our grandmothers dreamed of for them, we're doing for them. I mean, how, how does that make you feel? I'm saying this on like this historic moment. What our grandmothers dreamed for us, we are doing for them now. Right? You feel it. It's, it's powerful. It's yeah, really powerful because they couldn't have even conceptualized that this could happen. And you guys are the ones building this tech. And I'm so proud of you. And I'm so happy to share you with the world. So let's do it again. <laughs> Please do it again. Not wait too long. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye, you. Everyone. Great Bye. to see you, Luigi. Join us in, in Caribbean Crypto Queens if you want to meet the other ladies on that part of the world. It's kind of nice. We're rotating around the world now. So I'll see you there if you're, if you're still awake. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.